We actually argued that we're actually sitting on mountains of data, a world of data, the World Wide Web. And if you think about it, over the World Wide Web, consumers interact, interact with one another, in, sometimes interact with a firm. So really all we need to do is scoop this data, syndicate this data, and get, make some sense out of it. Well, easier said than done, because if you think about this world of uh, um, social media and the way consumers interact with one another over the web, People interact in, in a, a very, very unstructured and informal way. You can think about it as the wild west of writing. The tools we'll be using will be a, a, a text mining and network uh, analysis. So we'll start with a bunch of these. And I'll, I'll show you a, a, at least one case study uh, that, that we've used uh, where we will take hundreds of thousands, millions of these consumer forum postings. So suddenly, again, we move to, to a world where the data exists before the prob a problem because we have a lot, a lot of data. We don't need to worry about sample sizes. We don't need to worry about writing a questionnaire. It's all out there way before we ever thought about what it is that we want to study. And we'll then use text mining in order to convert this to something that I'm going to use to work with because I don't know how to work with this. I don't know what to do with smileys, right? I don't know what to do with text. So we'll use text mining to convert this, for example, to how often every car, cars will be the example I'll be using primarily today, uh, how, how often every card appeared with every uh, a term, for example. Again, you can think about that as a network, as an associative network in consumers' mind. There is a reason why they, they cared to mention a certain brand with a certain term when they wrote in the, in the consumer forum. We'll then use network analysis techniques because this is a, a, a semantic network or an associative network, we'll use network analysis techniques to convert that into insights. If you think about the, the um, world of social media and consumer forums, mining consumer forums, mining what consumers are writing in, in these consumer forums, you can think about it as a giant focus group, right? I mean, this is exploratory research, yet using tools like text mining, we can actually convert it to something more quantitative, meaning it's a combination between exploratory and descriptive research. You can also think about it as a combination between uh, observational research and descriptive research. We'll just be a fly on the wall. We'll just sit there and see what consumers are writing. We will not ask one single question. Just observe. Other advantages, there is lots of this data. This data keeps coming in real time. So again, a lot to uh, uh, deal with. There is no free lunch. Obviously, there are several difficulties. One of the difficulties is that, again, there is a lot of this. It's all over the place, all over the web. We we'll use text mining to handle this. The second um, difficulty is that one may argue, well, who are these guys? How many of you have posted on consumer forums? So we get about maybe 10%. So we're leaving about 90% of the population out. And what is it that these guys are writing about? Is it relevant? So in order to test ourselves, to ask ourselves, is it relevant, we'll try and compare these type of data to more traditional sources of data and ask ourselves, do they match? Where do they match? Where don't they? Are there interesting places where, for example, uh, uh, they don't? Again, we downloaded the entire uh, Edmonds.com uh, forum. And the first thing we looked for was how often every two cars appear together in a sentence across the 900,000 messages. Again, you can think about that as a semantic network between these. So one way to think, by the way, about this semantic network, we can now draw it using network analysis techniques. And here is the map. And I'm not sure you can see much from this map, but this is a little bit part of the point. I mean, we had 169 different car brands that we could analyze simultaneously. Try to write a survey asking consumers about how similar are 169 different uh, uh, brands, right? And the network analysis technique allows us to, to depict it, um, arguably, in a, in a visible way. Um, but if you can see anything here, as we move from these brands, Toyota Echo, uh, Mazda Protégé, all the way to the right, we move from the smallest cars in the uh, uh, category all the way to the highest-end cars. Here are the, the high-end Lexus, Lexus 500 and Lexus uh, 600. If you're wondering what the colors are here, we ran some segmentation on it. 
We look for, for segments in the network using a statistical um, technique. But let me move maybe to a picture that is a little bit easier to see, because there may be too many things going on in this picture. Let's move one level up. Instead of talking about car models, Toyota, Corolla, Honda, Civic, let's talk about brands, Toyota and Honda, OK? And here is a perceptual map generated from the text mining data. What do I mean by the text mining data? The way this perceptual map is, is created where brands that were mentioned frequently together appear closer in this perceptual map. So we can compare this type of data to the sales data. Here's the same map generated from trading in of one car to another. So in the previous map, cars appear close to one another if they were mentioned together in a sentence very often. In this map, brands appear close to one another if they were traded in for one another very frequently. Here are the two maps, one next to the other. There are obvious differences between them, but the correlation actually between these two maps, 0.76. The groups exactly, or, or almost exactly the same groups. So to some extent, there is a lot of similarities between the chatter on the web and the top of mind association, this associative network that I, I discussed before, and actual action of trading in cars for one another. Let's look at some of the interesting uh, differences. One of them that I thought was interesting was Cadillac. Cadillac was the only American brand that appeared in the segment of the luxury brands in the top of mind association. Back in 2003, end 2003, start of 2004, Cadillac uh, uh, made a huge campaign, $4.3 billion, to become closer to the import luxury cars, to move to this segment where we saw it belongs to based on the chatter on the web. And the question is, were they able to move the needle? So we know that, that Cadillac invested a lot of money, a, a, a marketing campaign, a repositioning branding campaign, to move away from being the classic American brand and towards being more of the luxury uh, brand. So in other words, if you go back to our picture, they, they made a huge campaign moving from being similar to these guys to being similar to these guys. And because we have a timestamp on each uh, 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 post, we can actually go and compare it. And here is the, the picture. Back in 2001, Cadillac was much more likely to be mentioned with the American brands than it was with the luxury brands. So this is how often did Cadillac appear with the, the, the group of American brands uh, uh, over and beyond chance in 2001, and this is how often they were mentioned with the luxury brands. As we move close to the time of the campaign, they started closing the gap. And in fact, by the end of the, 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 our, our period, which is 2007, they were already mentioned more frequently with the luxury brands than they were mentioned with American brands. So if you ask yourself, tracking the effectiveness of the marketing campaign, we can actually use the social media in order to ask ourselves, did we move the needle? And at least here, it seems like, yes, and just around this time, that's when Cadillac started closing this, uh, this gap. Another question we may ask ourselves, well, what about the trading data? Did it, did it move the needle on trading? Here is, the, here is the trading data. So the same measure, how often was it traded in uh, uh, from luxury brands or from the, uh, sorry, from the um, uh, um, American brands or from luxury brands, the trend is in the same direction, but much, much slower pace. So what we learn is if by mining our own business, mining uh, 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 the consumer forums about moving the needle on top of mind association between uh, Cadillac and the luxury brands, they were able to move the needle on the, uh, on, on, on the top of mind association. The move on, on trading in is, is lagging. So we're learning, we are learning something that possibly we'll see later on if they'll continue with, this, uh, uh, with, with, with su being successful in this campaign in really changing actual uh, behavior. I showed you here an example of how such data could be used for market structure for top of mind association to track maybe effectiveness of a marketing campaign. Uh, personally, I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. I believe it's the tip of the iceberg both on my computer science colleagues where the, the hammer, the tool, will improve over time. We are still not fully there. But uh, and not to a lesser extent actually on all of us in terms of realizing where could we actually 
use this hammer? What, what are the right nails? One, by the way, that I think is very, very promising is uh, understanding what's happening in consumer touch points. I mean, we now have a window into using this qualitative data that exists in touch points, such as call center conversation, chats, and actually trying to understand um, what is uh, going on there. So again, I think a, a very exciting uh, era to, to live in.